Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This evening, straight back from Blog Her to talk about Blog Her and to give us a little bit of a recap. We have got Melissa Lyon and Catherine Martini. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? We're jet lagged. Yeah. So it's a two hour time difference. <laughs> it was really hell on us both ways. I'm so sorry, you guys, for <laughs> dragging you out of your comfortable homes and making you come on my show and drink tiki drinks and tell me about your weekend. Well, actually, do you guys go on Thursday? Yeah, Thursday through Sunday. Mm-hmm. We left Sunday night. So before we get any further, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on Twitter and on the giant, massive interweb? I am at Melissa Lyon on Twitter, L-I-O-N, <laughs> and MelissaLyon.com. And I am at K-L Martini on Twitter and RecoveringStraightGirl.com on the internet. Okay, so first, why did you guys go to blog her? You guys both spoke. Mm-hmm. So why did you go to blog her and what did you speak about? I was on a panel called The Business of You, Bloggers in the Post-Employee World, and I talked about being a professional writer and blogger. Mm -hmm. I was um, asked to do a room of your own on queer bloggers, Mm -hmm. where we had a panel of uh, myself and two other women who were representing the queer bloggers that were there. So did you guys both go because you were speaking, or were you interested in going just for the attending experience as well. This was my second year attending, and I went last year and had planned on going this year, Mm -hmm. whether or not I was chosen to speak or not. But the room of your own um, submission that I made earlier in the year wasn't chosen until the very end. Wow. So I didn't know until just a few weeks before that I would be speaking. So it worked out that way, but I was planning on attending anyway. I wanted to go and speak. Yeah. be a fancy pants. <laughs> you only wanted to go if everyone there would love you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. Thank you. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Most everyone. Most everyone. <laughs> we'll just ignore the others. How's that? Okay. So, what was, what, give us the rundown. Well, because we were speakers, we got to go to the fancy party mm-hmm. in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so that was great, and we had a really great time at the fancy party. It was very fancy. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It was completely open bar, and the bartender made very fancy, fancy martini-type mm-hmm. drinks martini. that were yummy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was good food mm-hmm. and everything like that. And so we were super stoked yeah. on the blog, her experience. And then we went to the hoi, the hoi polei party, the commoner party. Uh-huh. The people's party. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a different experience. There wasn't a guy mixing drinks there so much as someone pouring out Pepsi, because that was one of the sponsors. Yeah. Um, but, and then each day there were a certain number of panels, and then you would have breakfast, and um, there would be a lunch, and then a keynote thing. And then dinner was mostly like hors d'oeuvres at various parties and things. Right. They had the afternoon keynote, and then as soon as the afternoon keynote ends, the cocktail party began. Mm-hmm. Which was a, a little difficult to want to change because, of course, we packed outfits for each evening and yeah. each day. And I think that it's important to always wear the outfits that you take on a trip. So we had to go I agree. Yeah. back to our room and change and would attend the uh, cocktail party just a tad late. And there were hors d'oeuvres, but they weren't good. Yeah. We had to cut out fried food at a point. We had to limit ourselves <laughs> on the fried food. So... Was it more about the conference or more about the parties and the socializing and the meeting the people who were at the conference? I think it was, I think that to get something really great out of Blog Her, you have to be ready to network mm-hmm. and you have to be ready to hit the ground running with it. I think it's true of any conference, you've got to be there to network. And the panels, I mean, I can't speak for the panels. I went to one panel, just my own, but I did some good networking mm-hmm. and um, ate a lot of hotel food and met a lot of good people. I also went to, well, I went to my own panel and then I went to one other. Mm -hmm. So I didn't attend as many panels as I did last year. Um, Unfortunately, what I found last year and it seemed to, it was reinforced with the panel that I attended that was not my own panel, 
that a lot of it, a lot of the conversation always goes back to the same type of thing, and that's ex- getting exposure, getting hits on your blog, and monetizing your blog, mm-hmm. which are all things that I'm not interested in doing, so it's, it's very much lost on me. So... I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to figure out here are all of the presentation panel presentations are there just I mean aside from the keynote the keynote is probably just a keynote with the exception of they, this year they added a geek lab mm-hmm. which I didn't go to any of those but I believe they were more one on one sessions that you could go and you'd speak to a geek about whatever the subject was and they were only 15 minutes yeah, half long. hour long that's it's really short. half an hour long um, and I didn't make it to any of those just because they didn't work with our schedule, which was busy not going to. (laughs) It was busy sightseeing (laughs) in Chicago. (laughs) We had a lot of sightseeing. So for you guys, Blogger was basically your own panel, Mm -hmm. sightseeing, and cutting out fried appetizers after a certain (laughs) point because you ate too many in the beginning. Well, there was also the. um, (laughs) There was. You weren't expecting this, huh? You're expecting us to come in with our notes. What happens is this. This is like, oh, Cammy doesn't go and do the blogger thing because of my own reasons that I have that I I actually you're actually probably aware of. But this is why I don't go because what I would do is I would go to all the parties and drink all the cocktails and eat all the food and sleep in because, um, uh, hello, hotel, sleep in. Right. And then I would maybe hit a session... And then I would come home and Dr. Normal would say, what did you do at the conference, sweetie? And I would say, I had a really great martini (laughs) this one time at this one party. Right. And then I talked to all these other girls and it was fun. Yeah. But I think that is, that's, (laughs) but you do get a lot out of that. And Mm -hmm. I think that especially for, um, especially for women who are into techie type things, it's nice to be around other women who are also into the same things. Mm -hmm. That you don't feel out of place for having your laptop and your Blackberry and and Twittering and Facebooking and instant messaging and eye chatting all at the same time with the person that's across from you while you're sitting in a keynote because Mm -hmm. it's expected. And that's kind of nice. Um, I know in my in my home, I take a lot of crap for how much time I spend on my computer and on Twitter and yeah. checking my BlackBerry. So it's kind of nice to be able to go and be able to do it as much as I want to and not have to answer to anybody. So even if you're not attending a lot of the panels, you're still getting that I'm at a conference feel. You've still got the other people that are attending, and it's like a big unit of the, people with their mobile For the devices. most part, um for the most part, I think there are there. It seemed that this year, especially, that there were mommy bloggers, mm-hmm. and then there was the rest of us. Mm-hmm. And the mommy bloggers were the majority, mm-hmm. um, and and we didn't fit in with them very well. No, it was a lot of. Oh. Well, the sponsors, they had an expo area at the bottom of the conference. It took up four floors. And on the bottom four were... Four floors of expo for the sponsors? No, the whole conference was over oh, four okay. floors. Okay. And the bottom floor you're... was... Yeah, oh, no. Like, no, dude. but the bottom floor was all the sponsors with their booths and mm-hmm. everything. And it was all laundry soap and cosmetics and laundry soap. <laughs> and in our little bag that you get to take home, you know, that they give the you. The swag bag. The swag bag. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a Mr. Potato Head in there for a women's tech and conference. And Ger- Gerber yeah, teddy. Like a, yeah, Gerber. Teddy bear. And not a teddy teddy, but yeah, a, a teddy yeah. bear. Because I'd like the teddy <clears throat> teddy part. Yeah, and no, I'd be like, wow, how'd you get the sizes right? <laughs> <laughs> no. And, a, and a, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of flash drives that yeah. said tied and all. Yeah. So it wasn't so much about tech as it was about marketers' perception of what women can think about in their tiny girl brains, mm-hmm. which is... Um, laundry. laundry soap. <laughs> yeah, I think you might also know how I feel about people telling me I need to do laundry. Yeah, I know you love the laundry. I, <laughs> laundry. laundry. So it was sort of, I mean, on that, it was really um, an experience for me to see that that was still something that happens. We are very sheltered here in Portland. Was that your first... It was uh, my blog first her. blog her conference, yeah, and it was my first like women's conference mm-hmm. of any kind, and so I was just I was flabbergasted when we went down to the expo floor, and the only tech sponsor was Microsoft, 
like that's it oh and picnic was there mm-hmm. that was it mm-hmm. I mean there was no like Google or blogger or WordPress or anything that would have to do with blogs except picnic which is sort of maybe vaguely related but um, so it was very disappointing and then the only tech conversation I had with anyone there besides like our group that we were hanging out with was from Microsoft and Louise at the Microsoft booth like had a great conversation with me and totally talked to me on the level mm-hmm. and it was fantastic and that was on my first day there just a couple of hours after my panel so I thought yay I'm going to be spoken to like I know stuff which I do mm-hmm. um, and so then I was expecting that and then you know you go downstairs and it's I don't know Tide and Walmart and I don't know who else the was Walmart there was hair product and yeah. deodorant and so it wasn't so much a tech I mean Here's the thing. In Portland, and you brought it up, we're spoiled. In Portland, if you talk about a blogging conference, mm-hmm. you're going to be talking about the technology behind it yeah. and everything that goes with it. You're not going to be marketed to for a certain demographic because of your sex. Mm-hmm. Um, but and being blog a mother her also. Is, and, being, mm-hmm. and being a mother. And being a mother. Because yeah, something had to come The three out of us of are all own. mothers. We all have children. Mm-hmm. We all write blogs. Does anyone in the room consider themselves a mommy blogger? No. 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 And it is a culture. I mean, that's what I took from it, that it is a culture, this mommy blogging thing. They really Mm -hmm. do identify with each other and sort of travel as a herd Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, have a hive mind and everything. It's kind of like junior high, only different. (laughs) And by different, not different. (laughs) And by different, not Not different. different. Just older (laughs) with children and babies and slings. Mm -hmm. Wow. Many yeah. babies and slings. Lots of babies. And so are men not allowed to attend? No, they, men can, they come. can attend. They can attend. They are called blog hymns. Really? <laughs> that was cute. Did you see any? Guys? Yes. Yeah, we saw them. I love me. And then a did guy... You um, uh, did you see a boy? A guy did a cooking presentation at one of the breakfasts. Some mm-hmm. famous chef. I don't know. He was it. super cute. He was very cute. Mm-hmm. I think I was starved for, like, male attention. Because I was like, <laughs> serve me. I'm here. He was super cute. So they let the boys cook? Yeah. But not clean. We are still responsible for the cleaning. Oh. (laughs) Um, But Rick Bayless was also there. He's a great cook. Mm -hmm. He does Mexican food cookbooks, and Mm -hmm. and he's quite good. Um, And then you know who was there was Tina Brown, who was the um, editor for The New Yorker and Vanity Fair, and she does The Daily Beast. Mm -hmm. And she gave one of the morning presentations with Eileen Shaken and um, another woman whose name I can't remember. Which I think was the the best Oh, my God. It was so smart. These women were just like the... The dialogue was just crazy smart, and I thought, wow, if this was everything that was happening here, this is awesome. And it was really nice for me to see that they had a high-profile lesbian as a keynote speaker mm-hmm. and didn't shy away from that. Um, Deb on the Rocks, I think, had said, is she going to address the, the, Hi, big Deb. Pink, <laughs> the big pink elephant in the room? And it didn't have to be addressed. I mean, it was right there out in front mm-hmm. that, that she produced a television show that was about lesbians and that she's an out lesbian and what the pink dollar you know uh, marketing to the pink dollar and how we are very loyal as a community to support organizations that support us Mm -hmm. so it was very nice to see that diversity because i did not feel that last year at all so this year we we even had uh, GLBTQ lunch tables if we wanted to sign up and go and sit with other queer bloggers. Okay, I would like you to, for the record, go through the GLB just go through all the letters okay. and tell us what each one stands for. Okay, it's actually longer than that. But okay, it's gay, mm-hmm. lesbian, bisexual, mm-hmm. transgender, mm-hmm. queer, mm-hmm. intersex, mm-hmm. Um, asexual, mm-hmm. allies. Okay. I always got stuck on the what queer. What I forgot? Questioning. Oh, questioning. questioning. That's right. There's two cues. Oh, I always got stuck on the cue because I always got the gay and lesbian. So what's the difference between gay, lesbian, and queer? How you identify. Okay. I mean, there's there's plenty of women that you can't pigeonhole and say that she's a lesbian just because she has a girlfriend. She may not be a lesbian. I thought that was bisexual then. Well, she may not be bisexual. She may I- identify as queer. Okay. But queer is, is a good um, catch-all. I'm confused now. Catch-all <laughs> phrase. That um, we, I, I use the word the, the word queer when I write my column mm-hmm. for Just Out because it kind of encompasses everyone and I don't have to use an alphabet okay. acronym. Yeah, because the big, long alphabet acronym. Mm-hmm. I, I once sat down and I was like, I got most of them. I'm, I'm proud of myself. Most of them are very obvious, though. I mean, but yeah, I just always got stuck on the Q because I was like, okay, no, because that gets those. All right. 
we can move on. Was it overall a good experience or a bad experience or just a somewhere questioning in between kind of moment? I mean, I can't sum it up in one word. I mean, I think that you know, being in Chicago with Catherine was awesome and spending that much time with Catherine was so fantastic and we had we got upgraded on our hotel room yes. and a beautiful view it was yeah. amazing. And we just I mean to travel with your best friend is like priceless. You mm-hmm. can't I mean, it's just awesome. And then we did a bunch of sightseeing, and we met amazing people. Mm -hmm. We had a fantastic time, and I loved meeting Deb and made new friends. And then I, like I say, did some really, really good networking. Um, And so all of that was really great. And then, you know, I want to do this women's tech conference now in response, not in response to BlogHer, just that BlogHer is very happy doing their own thing, but there's got to be something for women to explore technology in a Mm -hmm. place that they're not going to be sold laundry soap to. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> and so that to, for that to come of it, and if you know if this takes off and, and we're all able to do this, I think that if that came out of my blog her experience, then then that blog her experience was worth it ten times. But you know anything I could have gotten out of it. Um, but what was most disturbing to me, and truly truly disturbing, was the, the marketers aiming everything toward my laundry and my housework, and that that's still because I don't have a television, so I don't know that this is still how women are portrayed. Like I just go around in my world thinking people are going to talk to me like I know stuff despite my looks um, but you know it, it's not true mm-hmm. it's not true it's we're still targeted with these cleaning products and and I don't know how to get away from it and so that was really disturbing in years. <laughs> and then but the women are active participants in this conversation yeah that the mommy bloggers or whoever they are were just like grabbing at the stuff and like free tide was the best thing that they had ever seen in their lives and it was just like why are you participating in this conversation? Why? And so that was the thing that was that it was bad that the marketers were doing it, but ten times worse that women were excited Embracing about it. Embracing it. Yeah. I heard a comment, I read a comment on somewhere that the mommy bloggers are like the 50s housewife with technology. Mm-hmm. And that, and I think that it is giving them a, a voice that it's, they're, they're striving to have an identity. And I think that they're making an identity through being a mommy blogger. And mm-hmm. that, I think, is the saddest thing of all, that they can't have their own identity, despite the fact that they have children. And as someone who kind of lived that life for many, many years, it, it really saddens me that there are women who don't think enough of themselves to be able to make their own way and have their own identity, that their identity is completely focused on their husbands and their children. And the mommy blogging is maybe helping them, but I don't think in a positive way. You think it's helping them cope with their situation, yes. not helping them find themselves. Exactly. And I, I blogged about today they that Eden Fantasies had a party that we were like, oh, yeah, we'll go to that. They're well, see, I, I heard about that before you left. You'd mentioned mm-hmm. something about that, but then they were a sponsor? They were a sponsor, and they were giving away swag bags that had vibrators in them. Mm-hmm. The mommy bloggers were crazy for the vibrator bags. And I said in my blog today, I'm like, well, you know, they need. They probably need them more than I do. Oh, I think that so it could giving. be. You know, maybe it was some of their first opportunities to have a vibrator. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want. I mean, I don't want to get into too much of it. But I thought We've that the sexual about vibrators on the show yeah. before. We can. I think refer I've them sat back here to those and talked about vibrators, but. Um, I think that there's a certain amount of desexualizing um, that happened at that conference, and at the same time, there was a very um, that other bloggers who I talked to felt that there was much more like it was an opportunity for many of them to explore their sexuality at the same time. And so the vibrators. I mean, we went. The party started at like 8:30, and we showed up at 8:27 to the area where it was, and it was empty. Everyone was gone, and basically what had happened was the mommy bloggers had come in and like, whoa, like, got in all the bags, and then left and scattered. And it was just, there was no party. <laughs> it was just taking vibrators <laughs> and running. And I figured I had plenty at home, so. <laughs> yeah. Will you guys go to blog her again? No. I don't think so. No. Am I missing anything? No. No. 
When I have my own women tech conference, you will oh, miss I'm, something if you don't I'm, go. I'm You're all, helping. all over that. <laughs> You've already volunteered. I'm really happy that I went, and I, I have to say that last year's experience was more positive as far as the conference itself. Mm-hmm. As far as getting having something to take away from the conference itself, um, I, I felt this year it was much bigger, and the, the mommy blogger thing was, was a big issue. That was not as much of an issue last year. The monetizing your blog surprised me last year, and so I wasn't as surprised to hear about it this year. It sounded like that was a big push, though, the monetizing the blog. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think, though, that, I mean, I think that that's something that most of the women there wanted was to learn how to monetize their blog, but at the same time, they're willing to take free tide. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? And hawk the free tide or, you know, give shout outs to free tide. And so that's not monetizing. So if you want to monetize your blog, don't take crap for free. Yeah. Like don't take free samples. It's not value. It's Correct. not giving you any value. Mm-hmm. And so it Unless was. you really need laundry detergent. Yeah. But even the one we got was like two servings that's or whatever. True. So it wasn't like you could do much. So, um. Is oh, this, we have a man yeah. in the room. I'm sorry. Can Hi, I speak? Dog. Is it okay? <laughs> yes, baby. Am I a blog dude or something? <laughs> Have you ever posted a blog? Uh, I, I don't remember. No, you're just you're just eye candy. You can talk I, yeah, though. It's I'm okay. on Twitter. Um, so my question is, what it sounds like to me is this like the deuce effect? In other words, like everyone's kind of like going, "I'm gonna mommy blog and I'm gonna monetize my blog," uh, that sort of thing. Was a, there that kind of feeling to it? Um. I think that Deuce started it because mm-hmm. she's a mom and she blogs. Um, I don't know that. I think that and many has been of, successful. Yeah, and she's yeah. been very successful yeah. because she was the first one to really go the distance on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but she didn't start out as a mommy blogger. Mm-hmm. I mean, she had a blog before she was a parent. Yes, but she definitely Correct. became the mommy blogger Correct. category. Correct. And I think too, and. I, well, Deuce really, like, digs deep, you know? I mean, she's talked about her depression and being in the mental hospital, and then she's, you know, fairly, um, you know, she explains her little girl pretty nicely on the blog. You know, that girl probably is going to grow up and feel like she's never had an ounce of privacy in her life. Um, but I don't I don't know if these mommy bloggers are really taking it to that level. I think it's more of, like, a recipe exchange. Or so, so really, it was you were looking for the WordPress and, you know, the hosting sites and the people who yeah. could actually you were looking do for a tech things. Conference. Yeah, and you know, I really wanted tech. I really wanted, like, CSS coding and self Like, they had nothing on self-hosting. Mm-hmm. Nothing on how to self-host. I mean, I... Not even anything about hosting at all. Yeah, there was nothing... Was there anything about the platform using? No, no. Oh, there was... Yeah, they had different... They had half-hour section sessions on um, the half-hour geek lab when, like, one was right. WordPress <clears throat> and one was TypePad. One was um, how to use Twitter, like, beginning Twitter. How to yeah. use Twitter. Yeah. That's so cute. I know. Um, I was... I that's was, like a two-second <laughs> course, right? You get to log in and then you say I beginning shit. Twitter. Yeah. Wow. So I just I thought that it was it was totally unbalanced between unbalanced. I was very Sorry. happy that my session was the first the first breakout session of the first day mm-hmm. because I was able to find my people right away. And and that was good for Melissa too because she could hang out with, <laughs> with my people also. But I determined that they were my people too. They're your people as well. Yeah. Yes. Because um, as Alicia, one of the women who we met, Alicia Eller, she's so smart. Um, I wrote you know this whole blog post about hanging out with the lezzies and how I was identifying as lezzie the whole weekend because I did hang out with the mommy bloggers for like 15 minutes and I was so shunned for not being a mommy blogger. I didn't feel like I could do it. Um, and she said that you weren't hanging out with lezzies. You were hanging out with creative women, smart women. And so, you know, I stand corrected on that. She was absolutely right that it was my perception on, of it. But we did meet some really creative and wonderful people. It's true. So do we want to talk about the uh, future plans of uh, Yeah, I think she Portland? touched on it. We can. You touched on it a little bit. But she, we can discuss that Melissa wrote a blog post and was then nominated by the commenters. <laughs> That yes, we do in fact need a different women's conference about blogging and technology. Yeah, so I am I am starting like putting the wheels in motion to start a women's blogging conference, women's interactive tech conference. Um, I'm doing doing it with Kyla Casby, who's the tech blogger for the SF Weekly, 
And so she really knows what's happening in tech far more than I do. And she's got great connections, you know, worldwide in technology. Um, and so she she knows that element of it. And then I know the event coordination part of it a little bit. And then we'll just sort of ask for help as we go. Um, and that the response to even just a blog post where I made suggestions for blog her next year was so overwhelming. And people were like, I want that. I want that. And so um, I think it's really important. I mean, the response has just been crazy. My blog kits have tripled in the past two days. And um, people have been contacting me on email and in comments and on Twitter. And everyone unanimously has said, we need this. And I'm happy to do whatever it takes to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um and I just think it would be great. I mean, of course, guys are allowed there. It's not exclusive. And I want male speakers because a lot of the, the you know problem is is that men are the top of the field in this field, and it's predominantly men. But mm-hmm. in Portland, you know, women are just as interested in it. And and what I learned at Blogger is that there are many women all over the nation who are interested in it. And so my dream is that it'll be a nationwide thing that people will fly in for it, and it'll have that much draw. Um, and then blog her of course can't come to Portland because we don't have a hotel big enough. Yeah. Um, and they will never come. They'll to never Portland. come to unless Portland. Something gets unless built. we get a giant mega mall. Right. Yeah. Hotel. Unless Donald Trump decides to build a hotel. And I'll be honest, I don't think that that is a Portland thing. No, I don't it's think not. that Portland could handle that. Yeah. I don't see why we would want that. Yeah. So my idea is that, you know, blog her is doing something really awesome for the women who want to participate in it and like, go be happy and do that. And you guys are going to New York next year, like rock that. But we need something where we're not, where we're not being marketed to in that way. And I said in my blog post that you liked, which is that the sponsors will be educating women to not sucking the blood from them. So the sponsors there will be tech sponsors and, you know, people who are actually going to give us an interesting idea or an interesting product to look at that isn't laundry soap. Yeah, even if they're not a tech company that they can introduce some aspect to it that's going to be helpful. Right. And maybe, I mean, you know, you could kind of go crazy with it and it could be like we're thinking, you know, we want to make it very Portland and, you know, have some bands participate and bars participate and the hotel thing, well, we'll just work that out. Like Mm -hmm. that's people can figure it out. Maybe we can get some bike sponsors to donate some bicycle, you know, to Mm -hmm. lend some bicycles so people can ride or... And we we have have, we have Mass mass, Transit. Yeah, Yeah, with Mass Transit. And we can, like, really do cool Portland things. Like, I was thinking, like, network mixers with food carts, you mm-hmm. know, instead of, like, the gross hotel food. So the criteria will be that it is tech-centered for women, that the sponsors have to be teaching the women something and not no laundry soap. We have a no laundry soap rule. Um, <laughs> no laundry soap. <laughs> no gross I'm food. Sorry. That's our other rule. No Ugh. gross conference food. Every All the food will be delicious. Mm-hmm. And um, not boring. Mm-hmm. Open bar. We'll have oh, one open, open bar, bar party. Open, open bar. bar. <laughs> I'm all day. <laughs> well, I, I hope that um, you know, blog her has tried to sell this whole green thing that they're doing. This whole green thing and. Mm-hmm. I don't think that um, a conference where there's constant handouts and things are being thrown away and left and that's not it's very not green. green and also the hotel which I left blogger a comment about it um, the hotel got just brace yourself threw away beer bottles into the garbage. they threw them in the garbage yes. Into the garbage. Is that a Chicago thing or that <laughs> hotel? We heard that it's a Chicago thing. That Chicago is not big in the recycling. And That's, Melissa and how I. How many were people were at Blog? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred people. Even if only half of them were drinking beer. Yeah, there was no recycling for water bottles or glass, and the waiters were throwing glass beer bottles into the trash. That's, and I nearly had a panic that is, attack. The other thing, and that, that oh my god, I'm so a Portland was, girl now because yeah. I'm like. It was shocking. It was like <gasps> they're putting beer bottles, and they and also so in there Chicago, will be no throwing away of the beer bottles no. at the new women's tech no. conference that is yet to be named. Mm-hmm. Also in Chicago, um, they do not stop for pedestrians. Not at all. <laughs> that we are very Portland and very Portlandy. Okay. And pedestrians don't stop for cars, so it's this interesting dance. It's like that chicken. Happens. Yeah, it's oh. it's pretty intense. We were waiting for the light. We like, waited. We would not cross <laughs> against the light. We're like, no, we can't do that. We're from Portland. Yeah, we okay. just gonna stand okay. here. All right, so we're gonna wrap the show up. But before we go, I want you to each tell us, aside from the no laundry soap thing, two things that you would want to see at the at at a different women's conference, whether it be this conference that is being planned for some time about a year from now. Yeah. Um, what would you like to see out of a women's technology interactive conference? 
I would like to make sure that or to see plenty of diversity mm -hmm. and also focusing on um, women who are creative so whether we're writers and we're practicing our craft or if we're gardeners and we have a gardening blog or we're cooks and we have a cooking blog to focus on that creative part of it instead of just how to monetize or how to get hits on your blog. I would like to see actual nuts and bolts technology talked about, so CSS, HTML, whatever it is, um, actual instruction on how to do that stuff. All right, excellent. Uh, you can find Melissa at melissalion.com or at melissalion on Twitter. You can find Catherine at Kale Martini on Twitter or recoveringstraightgirl.com. We'll be back with After Hours with Catherine in a few minutes. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.